I'm still in the chapel. I've been here at church for, I gosh, five hours now, but it's all good. I had my Temple Recommend interview today, and I wanted to share some of that with you because I just felt inspired to come on Instagram and and talk about the process because it was really enlightening. So this was my old Temple Recommend card that I had, and because it rips and stuff, I get a new one every year. So now I have the hand of the Lord, um, or the hand of God, and I'm going to read you later a quote, my favorite quote by President Munson, which is inside this later. But I want to talk about what the temple means to me before I head home and have dinner. <laughs> I'm starving because I've been here a while. Today, I had my temple recommend interview with a member of the stake presidency. The experience was so deep the moving and it was so deeply moving reminded me once again of the profound significance of the importance of the temple <clears throat> in my life and in anyone's life that chooses to to be worthy to enter the house of the lord as i sat in the office the quiet reverence in the surrounding enveloped me and it was only right over there it was in our chapel it wasn't um i wasn't at the temple having my temple recommend interview with a member of the stake presidency but it was crystal hi i love you i just saw that you came on my friend crystal from saint george just hopped on and she's been on my mind and i've been having to be honest um like this texting phobia if you may because i get so many texts and i haven't reached out to her so i just need to one day this week take a walk and give her a call and see if she can answer because she's a important friend in my life her, both her and her family so as i sat in the office and had this this interview the questions asked were not merely procedural to me I got this overwhelming sense that they were a testament of faith and commitment to live the gospel. Each question brought my mind as I answered yes, yes, and yes, or 120%, or I just kept upping the ante, if you may, when I was answering to the questions. It reminds me of why I make and keep the covenants that I have and the blessings that come from temple worship. It reminds me, hello from England. I have, a, my best friend is from England. Uh, my friend Lorraine, love her. She's awesome. Lorraine Wheeler. So if you know a Lorraine Wheeler, give her a hug for me. She just came back from uh, the Rome temple. I'm so jealous. Anyway. To go back to the temple, I was um, profoundly reminded when I was in this interview with, with a member of the stake presidency why I go to the temple. It's not, the temple is not just a building. It's a place where heaven and earth meet. For me, it was where I feel closest to God and where I can receive divine guidance and comfort. In the temple or the house of the Lord, I find peace that transcends all understanding and is described in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God which all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. That verse resonated with me. And as I was preparing, I was going to go home because I'm still at my, my church, my ward building. And it's 90 degrees out. And I really want to put on some shorts and a BYU t-shirt or something. And just, but I felt that I needed to go on and do this live on Instagram. So I was researching in my Book of Mormon, um, 
I was researching verses, what I do is I go to the back of the index. Well, it would help if I had it right side up. Um, if I, I looked for the index and I was searching some things in the index and what it was, when I was looking for verses that resonate with the temple, um, Alma chapter 26, verse 22 came up. It states, he that repenteth with faith and I'm going to, I'm paraphrasing, um, and goes forth good works and prayeth continually without ceasing unto such it is given to know the mysteries of God. Unto such it shall be given to reveal things which never have been revealed. I read that verse and I almost got a tear in my eye because it tells me that we all have this ability to receive revelation in the house of the Lord. Uh, this scripture underscores the profound revelations and personal growth that can be attained within a, the sacred walls of the house of the Lord or the temple. As I reflect on these scriptures, I was reminded of my first temple visit, the time I ever went into a temple. It wasn't at the dedication or the open house that happened seven months earlier, because I was an aunt, I was against our church. Then it happened when I received a limited temple recommend and the sister missionaries asked me to go with them to the house of the Lord to perform proxy baptisms and confirmations. I went and looked back of the pictures that were taken that day and how much love I was feeling from not only the sister missionaries, but the love of our Savior when I entered the house of the Lord. I never thought ever I would do that 45 years the temple is also a place of connection connecting to God our Heavenly Father our ancestors our angels on the other side of the veil the sealing power binds families for eternity a concept that brings me immense joy, especially being a proxy for my grandparents, great grandparents, great, great, great grandparents, all the way back to, I think the earliest name I did was 400. Um, but I've gone like 300 BC as far as my family history is concerned. I hit what they call a vein, I guess. I don't know. Um, I used to, I'm, I do a lot of work on family search and I love it in doing my family tree. But the sealing power is where I resonate the most when it comes to the temple, especially knowing that I will be sealed to my family for eternity. That's a beautiful blessing that I receive from going. So the interview process that I received for my recommend reminded me I felt a renewed sense of purpose and determination to live worthy, to strive to keep the commandments. The temple is indeed a place of learning, revelation, and sacred covenants. It is where we can come closer to our Savior and understand our divine potential. I want to close with my testimony. As I witnessed today in church, people do fall away, but they can come back. Our doors these right here, they're always open, always open. 
was just live from my Come Follow Me program, and this is not about my testimony right now, but I was live sharing, we were talking about the, the core horror, Antichrist, and how Alma boldly defended the gospel, boldly defended the gospel. Wow, that's, I think, the first time I've shouted in a church building. I was reminded that the sister missionaries prayed for a walk-in and I came through those doors. And I have felt nothing but love here. Nothing but love. Anthony Bishop asked me, um, do I like girls? And to answer your question, um, I am gay, but I am following the same commandments to be a temple recommend, to be worthy to enter the house of the Lord. And the same commandments I'm following that all of our single brothers and sisters, over 60% of them who are single within the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am probably the last person you would have ever suggested would have joined this church because I was so against it. So um, my friend that asked that question asked um, if I like girls. The answer is I choose to remain single and follow the same commandments and to live the law of chastity to, um, and that's my choice. My choice isn't for everybody. My friend Grimm, 2010, asked, how long ago did you join the church? So I was, it was literally, so I was, I stole the Book of Mormon on June 19th, returned from Palmyra, New York, upstate New York, sacred grounds of the church, July 19th. And then August 19th, I was baptized in this very same building I sit in today, alone right now, because um, it's, I'm, I'm just here, I have keys and stuff, and I just was finishing up my interview for my Temple Recommend. There's a quote in here, uh, in my favorite photo, The Hand of God, and it's by President Thomas S. Munson says the temple provides purpose for our lives it brings peace to our souls not the peace provided by men but the peace promised by the son of god when he said peace i leave unto you my peace i give unto you and that's a quote by president thomas s monson so I um, lost my comments there for a minute, sorry. I'm just putting my temple recommend back. I don't want it, I don't want to lose it. So I gotta save it because this is my last one that expired. I'm gonna put it in my wallet so that way I have it. Never leave home without it. So as I reflect on what I learned in church today, I know the power of prayer and the power of forgiveness. It's true. When we ask, I, I also know that prayer is not like a vending machine that you can put in a few dollars and expect to get a can of Coca-Cola out or bottled water. Prayers happen in God's timing. And in Elders Quorum Presidency today, I shared an example of that that was very powerful. I just don't feel prompted to share it now. It may later, because I'm, I'm journaling it. And I know that through... When we accept God, and when we do baptism through full immersion... And we strive to keep his commandments. God will bless us beyond our wildest imaginations. And I say that as my testimony in the name of thy son, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Our friend Susie said, so glad I'm tuning in, feeling your sincerity, Dennis. Well, thank you. I prayerfully consider each and every time I go live or post anything. And I'm still learning. I'm still green. This, when I was doing the Come Follow Me lesson, I was having a hard time pronunciating because I'm dyslexic, some of the names. And, but I know the people that follow it know me and know my sincerity in my heart and my desire. I say I'm dyslexic in doing. So I pray you have a great Sabbath. I'm going to download this and as usual upload it to my youtube playlist that i have if you missed it i thank you and i pray you have a great sabbath and i'm gonna block up the church building and go out and enjoy this 90 degree weather and get some dinner have an awesome day everybody bye for now